Similar to list, there is another collection data type supported by some programming languages known as an array. For example, Go does not have a list data type but instead have array. Array can be used to store fixed number of homogeneous elements in a sequence. So array does not support heterogeneous data. If we should, the data type uh, should be same. If you're going to store integer, you can have all should should all be integers. If you're going to have string, should all be st strings. You cannot have combination of integer, string, float, and all of that. So it does not support heterogeneous. So try out, try out the code in the code pane and observe the results. I'm sure by this time you must be familiar with Go programming languages. So we need to input the package uh, in the main. Uh, we should have the package main. Then you should import FMT. And within the function main, so this is the declaration. For the normal variable, we will have a data type, then the variable name, then have the value. But whereas in Go language, it is a bit different. So the declaration goes this way. Ticket array is equal to size, data type, then values. Then there is another variable called a variable i, integer equal to 0. So fmt.println, that is a print statement element at second index position so how to read it the array name is ticket array of two will help us to read element at second index position so zero one two so we'll get we must get zero by this time so we, we, we're going to try section by section so random read so ticket array of two will give us zero Right, if you're trying to access ticket array to 1, let's see what happens. We must get 0, 1. So this is in the index position 1, 26302. That's the result we must get. Yes. So we'll try to access ticket array 2. Yes, it returns 0. Then we'll re rewrite ticket array 2, overwrite ticket array 2 to 93630. Then we'll try to access it again. So this statement will read second index position after random write, right? So previously it was zero, then after this nine three six three four. Then how to access elements in an array sequentially? Using for loop, we say i i was initialized before. It was here. Variable i was initialized before. Variable i i was initialized here. We are using it now. For i equal to 0, i less than len of ticket array. Len of ticket array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5. 0 less than 5. So it will, the condition will be true till i becomes 5. When the i is 0, condition true comes down, print the value. When i is 1, condition true 1 less than 5, condition true comes down, prints the value. i gets incremented 2 less than 5, true 3 less than 5 true, 4 less than 5 true, and 5 less than 5 fails. It comes out of the loop. This is how it works. Let's execute this and observe the result. This last section will help us to read elements sequentially, right? To access elements sequentially. So using this, the i was declared here, then is being uh, condition is checked here then it's getting printed i value 0 0 less than ticket line of array 5 length size size array of size of this uh, array is 5 so it, it should be fixed size we cannot change it right so 0 less than 5 condition true comes down prints ticket array of 5 ticket array of 0 78808 then it increments value i become 1 1 less than 5 condition true so it gets executed again and again. You will get the result like this. JavaScript has an array data type, but it behaves like a list in Python. That is, it can store homogeneous or heterogeneous data and also can grow dynamically. You need not have a fixed size. Try out the below code and observe the result. Let's try one by one as we did before. Homogeneous data, list of array lines is an array which is going to have three AI, AM and BA. Now, using this, there are two statements with which we can write uh, console.log log and document.write. So list of airlines is double quotes plus. Here we have to use plus symbol. So this is a string and this is a, the list will have values, list of airlines. So when you run this, 
and see list of airlines is A, A, B. It can also store heterogeneous data, mock, string, number, jack, nine, cham, five. Then we try to print sample list here using console.log. So it is, we got the output, but only problem is it is not getting printed in a new line. To print things in a new line on JavaScript, we will have to use this BR. Let's see this. Yes. Length function. Length will, will help us to get well length of the list. So it will tell us sample list length. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sample list length is 6. Number of elements are 6. So again, we want to get it printed in a new line. USBR. Let's try random read. Sample list of 2. 0, 1, 2. It has to give us jack. Yes. Then we are trying to overwrite the value to James. So the value overwrite is done to sample list of 2 James. Right. It was jack. After overwrite, it will be James now. Yes. It was jack before. Element at second position was jack. After random write, it became James. As I said before, the list in JavaScript is capable of growing uh, dynamically. You can actually change it, uh, resize it. So using push, we can add one more element to the list. So after adding the elements in the sample list. So previously sample list was Mark, 5, Jack, John and 5. After the rewrite, it was James. So now one more time we are pushing James. So it will have one more element. The size will become 7 now. Look at this. After adding an element, it becomes mark 5, James 9, Sean 5, then James. Let me use br here. You're right? Yes. How to access them sequentially? Again, using a for loop, uh, i is equal to 0, i less than sample list dot length, i plus plus. This is similar to Java. So, console.log, you're going to sample list of i. You're going to retrieve sample list of i every time. So, it is being printed here. You can have a uh, you can use br use br then plus symbol it will get printed in the next line but mark 5 james and all that's getting printed perfect i hope this helps you to understand the list uh, like array in JavaScript. It is also possible to have list of list. If you want to store the airline details of all airlines operating from an airport, we may use a list of lists as shown in the code below. Execute and observe the result. Look at this airline details. Air India is stores airline and the number of flights operated by them. Air India operates 8 flights, Emirates operate 10 flights, British Airlines operate 7 flights. So something similar to this we can how to access them? So print airline details of 1. So 0, 1. It will give us EM 10. Right? So first of all, let's, let's print the whole list and see what happens. Yes. So the moment you say 1, it gives us 0, 1. Emirates detail. If you give 0, it will give us RND detail. To get the number of flights operated by British Airways, 2, 1, index 2, 1, refers to the second list, right? Second list, 0, 1, 2, it refers to the second list and a first value. So, which means, refers to the 0, 1, 2, it refers here, then their first value means 0, 1, index based. 2 refers to the second value means index based. So, 0 index, first index, second index. And in this first value, 0 value, first value. It returns 7. To display the details of all airlines, so we use a for loop for airline and airline details. So, it takes 1 by 1. It takes AI, then EM, then BA. Let's observe the result. Look at this. AI, EM and BA. It takes one value. Uh, 
uh, in the iteration and takes get it printed. And finally, to display the number of flights operated by each airline. So for airline in airline details, let me comment all the sections except the last one to display the number of flights operated by each uh, airline, right? Let's go for a line by line execution and understand. The flow straight away comes to the end because the rest of the lines were commented. Number of flights operated. So look at add line. So this is a list, it, it has these many values. AI, AM, a list of list. This first portion has AI, second one has EM, and it has two elements, and then third one has British Airlines. For airline, in airline details, so first time it will be AI. Look at this. Airline is pointing to AI, zeroth index. Then it takes airline of 1, 0, 1. 1 is 8. Look at this index is given here. So 8. It prints 8 here. Then it becomes Emirates. It points to Emirates. The airline is pointing to Emirates. It will print 10. Then airline will point to British Airways. Look at this. Then it will print 7. That's about it. So let me run the whole program and see the observed output. Given a list of integer values, write a Python program to check whether it contains same number in adjacent position. Display the count of such adjacent occurrence. For example, 1, 1. Yes, adjacent 1, then adjacent position is also 1. Then occurrence is 1. Then we'll have to take this also, but this one, next position is adjacent value is 5. So we'll have to ignore this. 5 to 100, no. Minus 20. When it comes here, minus 20, comma, minus 20. Yes, occurrence 1. Then you compare 20 and 6, no. Then 6, 0, no. Then 0, 0, yes. So totally 3 occurrences. The same way, 10, 20, 30, 40, 30, 20. So nowhere. So it's a 0. Then the last one, 1, 2, no. 2, 2, yes. 2, 3, no. 4, 4, yes. 4, 4, yes. Again, this 4, 4, yes. So totally 3 occurrences. So it's very simple. All we need to do is take index portions of the list and compare this index portion with the next value. So using form of and range function, we are going to access the list element. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's the size of this. 0, 9. We'll iterate from 0 to 8. So the range is 0 to 9, but 9 is exclusive. If number list of i, number list of 0 equal to equal to 1, so we compare this portion with the next portion. If it is so, we will increase the count by 1. Right? Then we check. If it is so, then increase. Otherwise, no. This will continue. The only problem with this, when it reaches the last portion, let's say 8th index, right? Or this one. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So 0 to 8. When it reaches here, right? Then it will compare the next portion, ninth index. So what will happen is it will throw index out of range. Index out of range. To avoid this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop up to this. So here, put minus one. Lens, length of num list becomes uh, in this example, rent two, four, six, eight, nine. Length is nine. So when you put a minus one, it becomes eight, right? So elements from 0 to 7 will be tested. So, to cut it short, instead of the size 8, I am going to take only 4 elements. Let's see how this works. Visualize this. Right? The list is passed. It goes there. It comes down. Count to 0 currently. It is going to have only 4 elements. Right? For i in range of 0, comma, length of 1, 2, 3, 4. Size is 4. 0, 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3. But here what you have given? 4 minus 1. So 0, 3. 1, 1. It compares. Yes. Condition is true. What will happen? Count will become 1. Then it compares 1 and 5. Index is currently index value will become 1. 1 and 1 plus 1. You say number of Num list of i, num list of i plus 1. So you compare 1 and 2. 
what will happen? No. So it, they are not equal. So it will iterate through again. Then it moves to the index 2. Index becomes 2. So 2, num list of 2 equal to equal to num list of 3. 5 equal to equal to 10, 100. No, it's false. Then it stops right there. It moves to the, then return the count. Count value is 1. If you do not put len of num minus 1, num, len of num list minus 1, then what will happen is uh, it will come here to third index, then it will also try to check with fourth index. So fourth index does not exist. So that is why it throws index out of range error. I hope you are able to understand this better.